to uh, welcome today to our Dismantling Limiting Beliefs session. Thank you all for registering and for joining. My name is Chippa Nyandra Kundri, and I'm joined by my co-host, friend and sister, Keisha Rock. Good Hi, afternoon. Keisha. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Well, she said good afternoon and good evening. Well, for a very good reason here. <laughs> in the UK, it's now in the evening. Um, and I know people are joining in and connecting from South Africa and Africa and beyond. It's in the evening as well. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Those in the States, a good afternoon. In Barbados, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. So today we've got an exciting guest line lined up for us today. We've got three phenomenal women who are real, they're beautiful, successful, and impactful. I hope you agree. So those three ladies need to smile, including you, Keisha. There we go. <laughs> so we've got Angela Wilson. Hi, Angela. If you could just say hello to everybody. We've got Roseanne. Hello, Roseanne. And Sherry will join us in a moment. She's just um, logging in, having logging in issues. So I'd like to give you a brief background into our life. Now, Keisha joined me earlier this year as my partner in crime, actually, for a series that we call the Transformational Series. In this series, what we do, Keisha and I look at everything. We, we focus on the mind, the body, and the spirit. We look at real life issues, and we discuss all these issues in relation to what's going on in our lives and in other people's lives today. So Kisha and I are women of faith, and we discuss also men and women of faith from the past and the present, what they went through, what they're going through, and what has actually helped them to overcome obstacles within their lives. Now, one of the most common issues that everybody is facing, more so today, more than ever is limiting beliefs. So what is limiting beliefs? I think this is the most important question. It's something that I'm sure you've heard pop up and around where people talk about limiting beliefs. This is a, it's almost one of those common lingos. And as a teacher, I always believe that before we start talking about something, we've got to explain what something is. So Keisha, do you mind if I hand over to you? Just for you to give the definition of limiting beliefs. Sure, good. good day to everyone. You know, as we said, we're all over the world, but we are together today and limiting beliefs. Now, limiting beliefs, and there's a definition here for us, it's a state of mind, conviction, or belief that you think to be true that limits you in some way. And Craig Rochelle says that you know, our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So our whole concept for dismantling limiting beliefs is to get you to recognize that they do exist, they can exist, but we want to pull them apart. And we want to start to see ourselves as Christ sees us. So that's what we're here to do today. Limiting beliefs they exist. They can control us, but we have to make the decision about what we are going to allow them to do, how much strength we will release to them. That's correct, Keisha. That is really, really correct. And what I wanted to do was almost stretch a bit on what you've said here. So we now know that a limiting belief is something that causes us to believe negatively, causes us to lose control. And I want to talk about what is called the conscious competence ladder. Now this was developed by a guy named Noel Birch in the 1970s. This model is really very useful for anything. If you're learning something new or you're thinking about something new. So we look at it from a level of awareness. What am, what am I aware of? And then we also look at it from a skill level. What am I competent in? So everybody uh, before you learn anything, we, we're in a state of what we call conscience incompetence. We don't know something. So it could be ignorance. It could be just, we just don't know anything. And when we do not know anything, it means we, what we call unconsciously skilled. We don't have that skill yet. So we are insecure because even if somebody told you about something new, you, the first feeling 
or awareness is insecurity. I, I don't know about this. I'm, I need to know something about this. Now, this, it, it links in with, with belief. We start to think of something, which is something good, and then other thoughts start coming in, telling you, are you sure you're able? Can you do it? Are you worthy? This is the state where, un, where limiting beliefs actually set in. Now, usually when something is set in, you're battling, that there's a battle of the mind here and a battle of the heart. Um, you've learned a new belief, a new skill. You can actually choose to move in that state of comfort, which is called, uh, which is the second consciously unskilled. So in that consciously unskilled place, you, you, know, you, you now know that there's, there's a belief here, there's something I can do, but I do not want to do it. So you've actually said yes to your limiting belief. And when you've said yes to your limiting belief, you live in that comfort zone. That's you, that's it. But there's some people who actually push from that and they say, yeah, my mind and my body are telling me that I cannot do it, but I will push. I'm gonna push despite the belief, despite what I see, despite what I hear, I am going to prove whether this belief is true or not. So what happens is you now move into that state where you have learned something, but you're now developing the skill. So for example, if you're losing weight, you are now developing muscle because you're going to the gym and you're working out. So that's good. It's beginning to show security. You're beginning to see that when I work out, that good feeling, the feeling afterwards, it's the endorphins. Yeah, the exercise is good. When you start losing the weight now, in this example, you start to gain confidence. And no difference is the same with the belief. You start to gain confidence. And when you gain confidence, it means now that you now know that skill. You now know that what you had believed at first is true. This is the same cycle that you can use for you, anything in your life, but more so for limiting beliefs. So without further ado, I would just love to introduce our first speaker. Sherry, are you in? Uh, hello, hello, hello. hello. So before <laughs> I introduce Sherry, I just want to say something about this young lady. You can even see the way she's entered. That's the way Sherry does things. She's a boom lady. So I'm gonna just talk about Sherry, because Sherry is just fantastic. So most of you guys have seen the bios that I've been putting in on Facebook, on Twitter. We've been posting it on, on Instagram and on LinkedIn. And I've described Sherry as dynamite. Now, when we talk about dynamite, we talk about things that explode. And this is this young lady here. Now, she, as you can see, radiates energy. And this energy is enough to transform you. Now, I'm going to tell you, Sher Sherry's a kindred spirit. And I how do I know mm -hmm. Sherry? We've actually met via our business coach. So mm -hmm. listen, guys, coaches have coaches. I need a yes. coach. I need someone to stretch me. I need someone to make me see other things that I don't see. I may be a coach, but I'm also coached. And so we've got the same business coach. And wow, Sherry, you are something else. Now, yeah. for a short time that I've known her, her energy, her passion, and her love for God is infectious. And I know she's going to do this to you guys. She's going to shake you around a little bit for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> I've warned you before to prepare for this dynamite lady. And today she's going to speak on the topic about psychological causes and the impact of limiting beliefs. So I introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Sherry Sal. Welcome to the house, Sherry. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Chibo. I love you so much. I love you. Thank God. You. Oh, my God. Thank you. And Keisha, God bless you, women of God. I am excited to be here. And it's we're just getting out of morning service. So uh, we're running, running to get in this virtual room. OK. And so uh, first of all, this mental limiting belief. First of all, we're going to know, we're going to just say right here that limiting belief is from the devil. Come. OK, just go ahead and put that out there <laughs> that that is not what God want us to do and want us to have. And so uh, uh, first, uh, 
I just want to talk about real briefly here that a limited belief is exactly what you described earlier. It is our thoughts. It is opinion that we believe. It is the truth. I mean, it's like you believe in the lie. I mean, you uh, uh, believe in the lie. It's like when you have limited beliefs, it's like you believe what the devil say. You mm. believe what he say. And we know that whatever he say, we should think and feel the opposite. So if he said that you are not something, that really means, girl, you it, <laughs> okay? Not only are you it, but you are it, and we like to say in America, in a bag of chips. That means you got it going on, okay? And so if the enemy says that you are something, we know that what well, that is a liar because we're not what he say we are. He don't want us to be amazing. He don't want us to be fabulous. He don't want us to be positive, right? And so he tell us just the opposite of what we really are. And so I want us just to stop there right there. So if if, if you are believing whatever you believe your limited is, you're right. You're going to believe that. But I just want us, I want to think about right here, Moses. I want to take Moses as an example is that remember when God told Moses that he wanted him to go to Pharaoh and Moses initially is like, oh my God, who am I to go to the Pharaoh, right? And so sometimes when God show us something and sometimes initially, because it blows our mind, we're like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. But we have to remember that if God said something, if he spoke something to our life, then that actually means that we can do something. We can do whatever it is that he's given us the assignment. In fact, we was born with an innate ability to do crazy stuff for him, right? So, and so I want us just talk, I want us to look at James. I thought about Moses this morning, but I also want us to look at, at, at James uh, 1, 2, and 3. And I'll be talking a little bit about this, uh, that, what, what it says here in James. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to grab it here in the New King, New King James Version. And it says, I know prayer had already been started. I know we was praying earlier. So don't think I, I have, I've been praying for this all week, all week. So I know the prayer and everything, all the protocols has already been set. So but James here says, James 1 and 23, we're going to look at 23 through 25. It says here, therefore, get rid of, of um, 23, yes, 23, that's 21, okay. Ooh, 23 says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks in the mirror and after looking at himself in the mirror goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. I mean, so that's crazy, right? God said that you're fabulous and you know that you're fabulous. It's like you look in the mirror and you see that you're fabulous, but when you walk away, you forget what you just saw. That's limited beliefs. That's limited belief. And so James encourages us. He says that, you know, as long as you can see it, then you'll believe it. And where our belief come in is what? That we believe stuff that we don't see. Like we believe things that we still have to believe things that we don't see. If God had caused you to do, uh, uh, start something, a building or a business, and you start the business, but then you don't see the money, the finances coming together. You don't see the customers coming together. You don't see the support. But clearly God said for you to build something, right? He clearly tells you to build something. In Genesis, in the sixth chapter, around the 19 and 20 verse, God tells, and we know this is when God telling Moses to build. He gave Moses everything to build this ark with. He told him what type of wood to build. He told him how long the wood should be, right? He gave him all these instructions. And so Moses, uh, I mean, uh, Noah has these instructions that God gave him, right? And so what if Moses, I got Moses in my head, ladies, but what if Noah decided, even though God gave him everything to do to build this ark, he said, well, I, I'm not going to, no, I don't believe it's going to come together. I don't believe it's going to come together. Really? And that's what we do. When God show us something, we forget what he has shown us. And then we begin to have this limited belief. But why? Because we're believing in our own strength. We're believing something and we're trying to do something and operate from our limited strength now there are good things about us and there's so much that we have to know and so far we can go those things are called boundaries boundaries are called oh, this is all this is how far i can go 
in my natural ability before when, before God takes them, put the super on our natural in order for us to build it. So let me show you how in the natural what happened with Noah. So Noah built this ark, okay? So Noah built this ark. He do everything that God says. He said, build it. This is how I want you to do this. I want you to do this. This is what I want you to go get. And he said, I want you to take your wife, your son's wives, and y'all go in the ark and to be saved. So one time I was thinking, I was like, okay, how did Noah know which two animals to go get? We're talking about limited beliefs. Because in Noah's natural ability, he wouldn't know the right two male or the right one male, the right one female over giraffe to pick. He could have picked the wrong ones. Because God super was on his natural. Guess what the Bible says in verse 20? The Bible says that after Noah built the ark, the people showed up. I mean, the animals showed up, right? And so that's what's going to happen when you begin to do what God has called you to do. Remember when you look in the mirror. Remember what you read in the book. So the Bible is our mirror. The Bible is what God. Listen, when we look in the when we read our word of God, we're actually looking in a mirror. And so when we read what we when we read what we read, right? We can't forget what we just saw. We can't not unsee what we just seen, ladies and gentlemen, right? We cannot forget that. And so we got to know that God says you're on top and not beneath. And whatever he's called you to build, whatever he's designed you to do, know that he's already equipped you like he equipped the nor with the right tools, the right uh, materials, the right knowledge to build whatever it is that he's called you to build. And so get this, when you be obedient, because limiting beliefs is un, un is, is, is disobedient, really. When you don't believe what God said for you to do, when you don't believe the things that he has created inside of you. And so because of your obedience, the people are going to automatically show up. Because of your obedience, the finance is going to automatically come to you. And so that's why we got to dismantle, destroy the limited beliefs that we have put on him. He says, my grace is sufficient. In other words, there's going to come a point in whatever you're doing that you're not going to be able, you, you don't have everything to do, right? You, 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 it's going to come to a point where in your natural ability, it's not going to be significant enough for you to uh, 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 do to complete the work. And that's where we as believers have to know where do we start and where do we stop and where do God start? He's put it in us. So you know the scripture says that he that began a good work in you. Mm -hmm. He's faithful. He's faithful to finish it. But he's going to finish it. You can. We cannot do what God wants us to do completely on our own. So limited belief is really not trusting God. Oh my God. It's not trusting God. The one and only, the Elohim, the creator of everything, right? And so when we don't believe what God said for us to do, we, 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 what are we saying about the one and only true living God? So we want to dismantle that. We want to destroy the working and the words that you are listening to, which is from the enemy. And remember what James said. You can't only just be a reader of the word. You also have to be a doer of the word. And so if God has called you to create something, remember, he is faithful to finish it. He's faithful to give you everything that everything is inside of you. And so we don't want to limit ourselves by thinking we can't do something because of our natural ability. So just like Noah, he built the ark that was in his natural ability. But when it was time for the animals to go into the, um, the ark, Noah did not even have to go out and what? Pick the animals. Well, he didn't even have to go out. He just believed God when God said that the animals were going to come and show up. And they did just that. The animals showed up. He showed up. And that, that's what we have to remember. If that God has showed us something, he has given us the blueprints. Follow the blueprints that he has given us in our hearts. That's why we don't have to copy other people. That's why we don't have to try to sound like nobody else. That's why we don't have to do nothing but what he has instructed us to do limiting beliefs 
And that's what I want to just leave with you uh, with uh, as believers. Like I said, we know what we read. But as soon as we take our eye off what we read, because a life happens to us, because the people tell us we can't do something. And that's the enemy working through other people and coming to our mindset. So we have to transform the way we think and be ye transformed. Well, how? By the renewal of our minds. How do we renew our minds? We renew our minds by going back, like James said, go back to the word of God. And look in the mirror, which is the word of God, and stand on the word of God. It is super simple. I'm going to tell you something. If you decide that you're not feeling well, you know how sometimes we just wake up and we got something off. And this is what I have done. And this is what I do. I begin to pray and I say, God, show it to me in your word. Because life is so busy all around us. It's so much noise mm -hmm. all around us. And I know if I begin to read the word, I'm going to get an answer. So that's how I act. That's how I shush the voice of the enemy. And that's how I dismantle my limited belief because I'm human too. I said, God, show it to me in your word. And he does every time. He's always mm -hmm. giving me a word through his word. So I have to take action and, and, and come up against what the enemy said because I know what you're saying is not true. But I got to kind of, I got to figure, I got to find a scripture to go against what you're saying. So you say, I'm not good enough. God says that in my weakness, devil, he has made the most strong. So even when you don't think that I'm good enough or when people don't think that I'm good enough, guess what? He's going to show up strong in me. And we have to know our limits. We know where we started and we know where we stop and we know what God can do. He says, in my weakness, I am made the most strong. So I want to just leave you with that. Go to the word. Look in the mirror, which is the word of God concerning what it is that you are coming up against. And I guarantee you, not only me, but God said, I hearken after my own word. So whatever I say in my word that I'm going to do, you best to believe I'm going to do it. And so say, God, your word said that you have given me the ability to attain wealth. Your word said this. And so that's how we dismount them limited belief about going and looking in the mirror which is the word of god god bless amen. you amen uh, come on sherry ambassador sherry now that is what i call that is what i call some american preaching y'all hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Triple. thank you sherry thank you she made me think of the whole idea of the self-fulfilling prophecy come on we Come are on. what we say we are, and we Come say on. we are what Christ says yes. we are. Yes, yes. yes. Now so I we, love we what to bring it in. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sherry, you said something so important here, uh, and it's so important that we need to repeat it. She says, when a belief comes, it's almost as if it's it's a promise from God. It has arrived to you. Mm -hmm. and guess what when it's arrived those 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 limited beliefs come in they tell you that you can't you can't you can't mm -hmm. but guess what she says provision is also there mm. now that was really strong for me that already even in that in your dream the thing that you've been dreaming of mm. god already has provided for it if that mm -hmm. dream is from god provision is there he provides you don't need to think it will be provided for. And this is the same thing. I think we need to now operate from that place of saying, I'm a child of God. I'm mm -hmm. provided for. It is yes. given. And because he gave me the dream, the dream shall surely come to pass. Ooh, Amen. Yes. Oh, it's great stuff. Great stuff. Um, Roseanne, Amen. Got, what, what hit you, Roseanne, on this? So Sherry just blasted american style to us yes 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 she did she did you know as i listened to sherry i thought of jesus and the the devil when the devil came to jesus promising him what were facts mm -hmm. but jesus gave him the truth mm -hmm. right jesus did not change what he knew he was able to say Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, brings home what Sherry said, that we need to know the word. We need to look in the mirror of the word. If, if, yes. if we are going to um, dismantle these limiting beliefs, 
we have to know what God has promised us. We, we lock on to, and it almost becomes cliched for us, the scripture, um, Jeremiah 29, 11, we feel good saying that, but then yeah. when we look at our lives, they're not reflective of, mm -hmm. of, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to mm -hmm. do good, to bring you to a good end. Yes, in the earth, a good end. You know, I heard someone say that um, we, we, we go to school to prepare for our life. This is how we are taught to go to school to prepare for our life and to go to church to prepare for heaven. Mm. But the church is the higher institution of learning to prepare us for life. We came out of God. We came out of God without God diminishing himself, devaluing himself. He gave us some of his self, but he's still all powerful. We yes. have power as well. So sometimes we are limited in our thinking. Yes, things come to us, as Sherry said. Things come to us. The promises come to us. But then there is that voice in our head that is telling us, you can never be. You will never be. You cannot do this. You cannot have this. Go to the word of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And why we do not... Um, experience that is because we stop short of where our thoughts are leading us we are led in the other direction we go downstream with the dead fish instead of going upstream where we have to swim amen. The amen. amen so wow and the other thing this young little dynamite lady said she said the bible is the mirror yeah ah hashtag truth the Bible is the mirror. And that is a lesson in itself. When you read it, know that you're reading truth. The same mm -hmm. way that when we look in the mirror and we say, I look good. I am a child of God. The word of God, reading it itself comes to pass. When you, when you align with it and actually agree that it's a mirror. <laughs> this is me. I'm reading me. Amen. So Amen. I've actually put Roseanne on the spot here because she's our next in lineup. I just wanted to warm up, you know, our vocal cords, get ready for the next session. So Keisha, could I just ask if you could just introduce this phenomenal woman of yes. God? Yes, yes. And that's, that's, that's the perfect word. Uh, Mrs. Roseanne King, I call her Auntie Rose. She's also my pastor. So she is a spiritual leader. She is a wife, she is a mother, but most of all, she is a woman of God who is not ashamed to profess her love for Almighty God and to recognize that all that she is is because of who he is. And, you know, Pastor King would have been the one who encouraged me to grow. So it is really an honor to share this platform with her today, to have her in this forum so that you can see and have a taste of a little bit of what I get. Her tagline is having a courageous conversation. So I invite you to buckle up your seatbelts, get your mirrors so you can see yourselves when you get those aha moments, when she says something that really shakes you to the core, but I'm promising you, you're gonna have some valuable nuggets to take away. So Auntie Rose, Pastor Rose, I turn over to you. Yes, thank you very much, Keisha. Thank you, Shipo, for having me in with you this evening is an honor it's a pleasure talking about limiting beliefs not just limiting beliefs but dismantling these limiting beliefs i saw a quote recently never lack never let lack of applause fool you into thinking that what you're doing isn't important never let absence of celebration Fool you into thinking that you are not worthy of occupying spaces with love. External validation is easy to get. Learn to honor you and your flowers first. Billy Chapata. Wow. I may not have, and you may not have control over what life throws at us, but we have control over how we respond. And it has to do with the mind. Question is, will I let life, will you let life happen to you or through you or for you? We have to ask ourselves 
that question and Romans 8, 28 says to us, and we know, and I know, and you know that all things work how? Together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. We are talking this evening about dismantling these limiting beliefs. And we are talking about a God encounter. When you encounter God, when you are exposed to yourself, because I usually say, you know, the Lord does not, God does not expose us to the world, but he exposes us to ourselves. And then we are the persons who expose ourselves to the world. There's a story in St. John chapter four of the woman at the well. It tells about Jesus' disciples going away. They were traveling through Samaria and they went away and Jesus was by himself. And then here he had an unusual encounter with a woman. He, a Jew, had an encounter with a Samaritan woman. Limiting beliefs. This woman knew a lot about spiritual practices and beliefs, including the promise of a Messiah. But as she left her home that day, maybe with, with her jar in the heat of the day, hiding her face from the other women, mainly in, in her town, she did not know, she had no idea that she would meet the Messiah. And as Jesus taught, as they taught, Jesus reveals himself as the Messiah and offers something greater than what she came from her house, house with the thoughts that she came from, from her house. What we get out of this, out of this, out of this account is that if or if you're going to dismantle or limiting beliefs, the way we think about herself, because no doubt, let's let's get into that woman's story. Let's get into her shoes. No doubt she was so embarrassed. The word tells us she had five husbands already, somebody else's husbands, maybe. And the one she was with now was not her own. Imagine, I can imagine in my own Barbados how I would be talked about. I would be the talk of the town. And that would affect my thinking. It would affect my thinking how I felt about myself. So what happened though is that this woman with honesty and she was willing to see a different reality which led her to a dramatic change in her life. What she was thinking when she left home, her attention was on the women and others in the town. But when she met Jesus, her whole thinking changed. We aren't told exactly what she was thinking, but we witnessed a turnaround in her beliefs, her feelings about herself, and her credibility with the people in her town. And using this um, story as an example, when there is an encounter, a divine encounter in the ordinary, there's a face to face with ourselves, there's a face to face with God, there's a one on one interaction with Jesus while she collects this water. And it's not a chance encounter, just like you are not here this evening by chance. Typically people come to the well early in the morning and her thinking was, I don't want to go because I'm an outcast. She was shunned because she was promiscuous, right? But she ventures out when no one is venturing out, when no one is venturing out. And then she was up front with God. She was up front with God about her beliefs and about her doubts. And that's what we have to do when we have an encounter with God, when we realize that because of limiting beliefs, the way we think about ourselves, the lies that we are telling ourselves as we compare, as we look in the mirror, as, as Sherry said, the mirror of the word, that we are not just reading the word, but that we are getting the word into us. We are not just getting into the word, but we are getting the, the word into us. So Jew and Samaritan, you cannot think that the two of us are going to come together, but that was changed on that day. And instead of accepting conventional wisdom and what we've been told by other, 
others. We can engage God with our concerns and the confusion that we have in our minds. And God welcomes the opportunity to speak with us, even in unconventional conversations. So Jesus, Son of God, the Messiah, here he was a Jew, she was a Samaritan, but he defied the thinking of the day. And what happened? The woman at the well articulated and defended her worldview to Jesus. And we have to be able to articulate our views, our opinions, our beliefs. And we have to be able to defend. We have to be able to defend. And she starts questioning his actions. Why are you asking um, from, me, from me a drink? That does not happen. But Jesus defied the thinking of the day, the rules and the regulations, and sometimes even the rules and the regulations hold us captive in the mind. We cannot do it. I am on the, the, the bottom rung of the organizational ladder, and I will not get any further. And let me say the devil is a liar. Still go back to God has great plans for me. And I say, sometimes we stop ourselves from partaking of the things that God has for us, the table that he has spread in the presence of the enemy of limiting beliefs. That we talk about an awesome God, a big God, a powerful God, but yet what we do is shrink ourselves. We shrink ourselves and therefore we are miniature in terms of our reaching that table to take what God has given to us. We have to be willing to change our view of the world and our, our worldview. And what is most notable about this encounter is that the woman changes her view of the world based on her conversation with Jesus, the greatest coach of all, who causes her to reach into herself causes her to reach into herself because it was always there. That thing that God placed in her because she came out of him. So God is infinite. God is omnipresent. We are, so to speak, omnipresent to ourselves. Everywhere I go, I am there. Everywhere you and I go, God is there. That's the difference between um, God and we ourselves, the greatest coach of all. And what happens? She does not merely fit new facts into her base of knowledge, but what she does is reverses, it reverses this change, this transformational change, reverses much of what she has long believed, that I cannot interface with these people because of what I am doing. I cannot chat with them. I feel so ashamed of myself. I want to get past this, but I can't get, get, get past. So this woman exchanges the past suppositions for the new truths that this great coach helped her to unravel. Because you see, when Jesus, when she had her accusers, and yes, we have the accusers in our minds, but when Jesus comes, he goes down into the dirt with us, like he went with that woman. And when he came back up, he brought her up symbolically. When Jesus came up, he brought that woman up out of the dirt and he brought her to a place where she was transformed. Those limiting beliefs were dismantled. I encourage you this evening, recognize the truth and accept the refinement that God has for you in terms of your limiting beliefs. God bless you all. Wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rose. Doesn't the encounter, doesn't the encounter with Jesus, doesn't an encounter with God make the difference chippo doesn't it make the difference and it doesn't matter what others are saying about us it doesn't matter what we would have experienced before when he comes to us and he offers to us that water he doesn't say oh i am this and you are that you're in london and i'm in barbados he brings us together he aligns us with the right people and then our minds are truly transformed. 
that is powerful. And we always have to go back to the word. Always have to go back to the word. Who does God say that I am? Wow. For me, hands down. Thank you, Roseanne. I mean, this, th that story is so cognizant with what happens in life. This woman at the well is what we call a repeat offender. <laughs> it took her five times where she's looking for love. That's all she wanted. She wanted a man to love her. She, she wanted to be a wife, a mother, because in that society, that's what's required, yes? And she looked for love five times. The day she found perfect love, she found it in Christ. Amen? And that's, that's powerful. You know, that is powerful. So one other thing that I picked up from Roseanne is that God, he loves us with our imperfections. <laughs> He digs in and he looks for our imperfections and he, he uses those imperfections to just work in and through us. The, the other thing I, I, I wanted to add on here, my, my thought process as Roseanne was teaching was that we are, we are human beings, but we're made up of mind, body, and spirit. And because we are mind, body, and spirit, we notice that naturally we, we tend to, to focus on the two. So we look after our minds, just making sure, you know, we, 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 we're saying the right mantras, we, you know, we're proclaiming the right word, we look, look after our bodies, we eat well, we exercise, but we sometimes duly neglect our spirit. Now, in order to be successful in anything, in fact, in everything, we need to make sure that mind, body, and spirit are in sync. It is so important. And with this woman here at the well, her mind, her body were okay because she was looking after those things. But the day she then had the encounter, which is the most important thing that completes that process of success, of completion, of wholeness, was when she met Christ. Thank you so much, Roseanne. That, yeah, it's, it's, it's still ringing in my ear. And I'll listen to this on replay because I know there's a lot more nuggets that you and Sherry have just burst out. Thank you so much, woman of God. So, Angela, what did you think of, Miss, of Pastor Roseanne? Wonderful. <laughs> breath of fresh air. <laughs> she is a breath of fresh air indeed. A breath of fresh air indeed. Sherry, I can see you ooing, are we? And you were doing the clapping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I, I love the fact that she said that a, a divine account, accountant. And that's all we need sometimes is just one conversation, yeah. you know, just, just one conversation. And then something else she, she said, it says that, uh, she said that um, God exposed, he exposed the word W-O-R-D to us, but we expose ourselves to the world. And yeah. I thought that was great interest because I was looking at the word, I, I was doing like a word play on that, the word in the word. And that's what we have to believe. Are we going to believe what the world say? Or we're gonna believe what the words say. And so I thought that was very interesting because God only tells the truth. And the truth is in the word, W-O-R-D, which the world is full of lies. <laughs> That's where our limited beliefs, we, we pick up those limited beliefs because we listen to the world and what the world say instead of what God says. We're listening I to that, that owl. Great. We're listening to that owl in the yes. world, the lie in yes. the world. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Wow. wow. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, women of God. And, and I really and truly, I am excited to introduce my next speaker. I want to, it, it really, this young lady has had such an impact in my life. She's our final guest today. And wow. So the first thing I know is, I just want to say to you guys that this lady Angela, who I'm going to just introduce, I'm so privileged. It's a privilege to call her a sister. Now, I just met this lady and thought I've just met another white lady in life until I found out who she was. And I, I'm sure you've read her bio, but I'm going to give you a bit of background here because she's very dear to me. So uh, Angela, I, I'm naturally an introvert. I hate 
places where it's crowded. It, it's really difficult for me. I, I can't think if that makes sense. And even doing this today, being live, is me overcoming a limiting belief. I don't like being live, but I believe we have a message and a message that we want to give to people, which is why I am being live. And I've been spurred on and pushed on by people. Thank you all those that have pushed me on. So an introvert like myself is Miss Angela here. She has quite confidence and she's got a trans energy. Now, I met Angela many moons ago when I was a CEO of a children's trust. And I, you know, as a CEO, you have to attend these gala dinners and, you know, you've got to go and represent the charity and, you know, make money for, for the trust. So I, I attended a gala dinner that was in central London. Now, as I said earlier, I personally just do not like crowds. And, but because of the nature of the job, I had to go, I had to attend because this is money coming in. I can get potential people who will bring money. So I entered into the hotel, this plush hotel in central London, picked up a glass of orange juice and, you know, my eyes just, you know, when you look in the center and you see hundreds of people chatting away and there's something about that buzz, it's a little, and for me, my heart started to pound, like what next is, it was going through my mind. Now, this event in itself was no ordinary event. When I'm talking about people there, it's not just ordinary people. There were famous people in the building. <laughs> and, you know, there were famous people, yes? And this made me feel there even more. Yeah, it made me feel even smaller. And, you know, because who am I? What am I doing amongst these people? And I'm going to give you names here, then you'll know what I mean, yeah? I took a deep breath in and, and I prayed. I just said, God, I just pray that this evening end sooner rather than later. I just wanna go home to my quiet space, my comfort place and relax. That's what was on my mind. But you know, I I then, I was standing in a corner, still by, I was actually by the coat rack, wasn't I, Angela? Yes, <laughs> still by the coat rack. I'd given the concierge my coat, but I was still standing there trying to figure out my next step. So I'm sort of like looking around now. So I'm now looking at the corners. And when I looked at the corner, I saw a lady who was doing the same thing that I was doing. <laughs> she was also looking into this big audience and I'm sure she was wishing the same thing. Can this evening go by quickly? And as if, you know, when you look at somebody, she, she felt my gaze and then she, she turned and she looked at me and she smiled. That was the first thing, light, she smiled. And when she smiled, she walked towards me. She just said, hi, I'm Angela. And then as if by magic, you know, we started to talk. And as we were talking in our corner, we, I started to notice that people were now starting to come towards us. And when they were coming, they were greeting this beautiful young lady by my side. And some of them were literally begging to take pictures with her. And I'm thinking, who am I standing next to? <laughs> people want to take pictures with this woman. But what she did is, because she had already sensed me, she was taking pictures with these people and she was also making me stay and, and be in those pictures with her. So not only just that, even when we went and we, we had assigned tables, we sat in the tables and she had her table and I had my, she would stand up and come and find out if I was okay. Guys, let me tell you something. The place where I was at, the place where I met this young woman before I knew who she was, yeah? I photobombed Rio Ferdinand, the footballer. I did. My cheeky side decided to photobomb a football player. Ah, not only that, Angela and I, we have a gallery of pictures with many celebrities. Listen, guys, we have a picture with Tito Jackson, Stacey Solomon, to name a few. So this lady here is quiet. She's reserved, but she's famous. She's famous for something. She's actually, she is actually a named Team Great Britain Olympic swimmer. I only got to know that later. Yes, wow. So I want to introduce her. I'm honored to introduce her. I've worked with Angela. We're friends, we're sisters. I've worked with Angela myself as a business consultant and a strategist. And Angela is a spiritual sister to me. She's a sounding board and she's a praying sister. 
you know, she, she can sense and I can sense, we sense each other. She, she's, she laughs, she mourns with me, she celebrates, she encourages, and she, re, she gently rebukes and she lifts me up when needed. I call, when I'm calling her sister, it's because of these things. Now you understand. So I just wanna brag that my sister is pure gold, said, said, she's pure gold. But what she's gonna do is she's gonna tell you about how she herself has had limiting beliefs and hurdles to overcome. Today, Angela, who's gonna to talk to you, is an owner of 18 franchises with her name. And that's only in the Southeast of England. She's growing further. If we meet up the same time next year, she will have another 18. That's the kind of businesswoman she is. She's quite the successful entrepreneur. So if you guys want to know or learn business secrets, that's the lady. That's the lady. So she's going to lay her heart bare to you guys now. And she's going to tell you a story from pain to joy. I introduce to you right now, Mrs. Angela Wilson. Hi, Angela. Hi. Chippa, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> it's, it's just quite an amazing introduction. I always feel if my story won't live up to the expectations of, but it is wonderful sure to will. be here. And I'm really very grateful. And as Chippo said, we did meet under some strange circumstances, but we instantly felt a connection um, when we met. And I think for me, it was just knowing that somebody else felt the same way. And um, it was a really, a really lovely experience to have met Chippo when I did. And now I'd like to share with you a little bit about my story. But um, before I do, I wanted just to say thank you again for having me here this afternoon and letting me be a part of this panel. It really is quite um, an honor to have the opportunity to do this today. But my story begins about 40 years ago. And um, when I was only five years old, my dreams of becoming an Olympic gold medalist started from that very tender age of five. And I wanted so much to see that Olympic gold medal around my neck that I dragged uh, myself and my parents to the pool every day for the next 20 years, getting up early before school, swimming was just the most important thing to me and I trained really hard I was dedicated I had parents that loved seeing me achieve and were very supportive which I couldn't have done without having their support and I think in life we realize that when we go through difficult times or struggles or we're trying to achieve something we always need to have someone there behind us to help us to get to these places. And for me, it was definitely my parents and my mum and dad were the greatest supporters that I had growing up. And my family were all very close to me and helped me along the way. And I went on to train and at 15 years of age, as Chippo said, I was selected for Team GB and selected for the Olympic team in 1991, the year before Barcelona. And I had swam and competed and won various titles, competitions over that past year, which gave me the opportunity to um, be selected for um, Team GB. And about four weeks before this Olympic trials were taking place, the team decided to change their qualifying rules. And I missed out on going to the Olympic Games at 16 by one tenth of a second. By one tenth of a second. So it was such a, a difficult time for me because I had spent 10 years of my life, over 10 years of my life training early every day before school and wanting to have that Olympic gold medal was the most important thing at that moment in time to me. So when I didn't get to go to the Olympics, when I didn't manage to achieve that, it was really difficult for me to think, what am I gonna do next? What, where am I going to go? Because all I had known was my swimming. So I decided um, the only thing that I knew was swimming and I turned my hand to teaching. Found that I loved sharing my passion for swimming with others. 
And from this, it grew into a swim school and then became a business. And now, as Chippo says, 25 years later, it is now a successful growing swim school. But the pain that it took to get here and the journey that I've had and the changes that have made in my life from not getting that Olympic gold medal has just been amazing. And I feel that the journey that I took from being a swimmer to being a businesswoman is really down to the Lord's guidance and him telling me that the doors that I had planned for myself to open were not the paths that he wanted me to take. And sometimes I think we find through life that we have dreams and, and goals and we have things that we want to achieve, but we don't realise that God's dreams for us are actually bigger and greater. And the impact that our lives can have on others was, for me, more important than just winning that Olympic gold medal. And I've gone on to see thousands of children and adults learn to swim. I've also had the opportunity to see children I talk to swim go on and make it to the Olympics. Even though it was my dream to go, I didn't get that opportunity, but I was able to help others to get that opportunity. And God led me down this path. And at 16, it felt like my whole world had fallen away and I didn't know where I was going to turn, but God had opened that door for me and brought me through it. And now I'm planning to try and take the business model around the world. I've developed a character led program to inspire children, to help children and encourage them to be better than, than they are and to make them think more about achieving and working hard through the character program and giving them the rewards back with the characters to see them actually enjoy learning to swim. And this has all been possible because God closed the door that I had hoped I was going to go through, but he closed that door in order for me to have more doors opened in my life. And something that I read today has really helped me and um, reminded me of, of what it is that's so important in our lives. And a verse that came to me today was, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I think that's very true, that discouragement happens and you just want it to stop. And you can try all the positive thinking you want, but sometimes we cannot overcome these things. And then it's when we, we realise and we search our heart and know God that he leads us in the way that he wants us to go. And he helps us through the scriptures and through prayer and through um, the relationships with others in Christ that we can overcome and that we can be the best that he wants us to be. So that's that's my wow. story. <laughs> wow. Well, 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 so I, I'm going to just stretch you and pluck out your your testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, I mean, it, to the naked eye, it might look like this, you know, was a failure and that something was like, what, what was carry back, if you can call that, a carry back plan. But you have seen God's hand in this whole process. What I'd like you to do is just talk through, talk through the feeling when you were 16, when, when, when you then realized that my dream, what I've been working so hard for, is actually just about to come. What really went on? What what was what were those feelings? Because those are the feelings that we experience. Yeah, I each think one of us. The, I, I at sixteen, you don't really know yourself. Um, you know, it was thirty years. You know, I hate to say that, but it's thirty years ago, um, and mm. I still remember how it felt when I touched the wall and looked up at the the scoreboard and saw my name was second. And it was as if someone had knocked the wind out of my sails and the wind out of my stomach. And my whole body and mind and soul just felt everything drop at that moment in time. The discouragement that I felt 
And also I think as well, I felt God had let me down. And I didn't think that this was, I, I thought I was supposed to go to the Olympics. I felt I was meant to be in that team and winning that gold medal was what I had worked for and trained for all those years. And I couldn't understand why I hadn't managed to make that team. So at 16, it was tough to then realize that God had another plan for my life. I did go back and swim. It took a while, but I did go back and train. And I did end up going to the Commonwealth Games in 94. And that for me was the highlight of my swimming career. And I was really grateful that God gave me that opportunity to, to go and do that. It was amazing, yeah. And I think you're missing, you, the people are missing something here. There's, there's a feeling aspect, but they, well, you remember that, that chart that I put up about the competence piece. It's about a skill set and it's also about an awareness. Now, I've met you for breakfast, Angela, and I've met you at the pool because it's something you've learned to do. It's, it's, it's an acquired skill set, right? So can you tell the people here what it takes in terms of training to, get to, to be that. a swimmer and then to be a swimmer that's selected for these kind of competitions? Well, I used to get up every morning at half past four and I would start my day at five o'clock in the morning at the, the gym. I would usually spend an hour in the gym from five to six and then two hours in the pool. And when I was 15, I used to then come home, have breakfast and go to school and then come back and then go and do another two hours training at night. And then when it got really tough, the training, I dropped out of school. So that for me was where it became really even more difficult when I didn't get that um, touch on that pad because I had given up everything, my education, everything I had given up for that opportunity to make it to the Olympics. So it really was a grueling experience that I went through. Um, the pain and that you go through in the pool, the training. I was actually saying to someone yesterday, I don't think anyone, any other sport trains like swimmers. Swimmers, it's grueling, it's hard, it's it's exhausting mentally, emotionally, physically. You're put you're putting your body to the to the limits, pushing it to the limits that you never even thought your body could go to. And and it's the mindset as well, because you mentally have to keep yourself going through that pain barrier to actually reach and achieve your goals. And I did that for a good 10, 15 years of my life. That was what I spent my, my time doing. So it was hard doing that, yeah. I think that's the important piece here um, because we are, that's the way we are wired up. We work hard for something and sometimes it's not what we seem or think it to be. But today, as you say, you own a swim school and not only just that you own swim schools <laughs> and you're going to reach out globally. Yes? yes. And that is the of it. So the swimming has, hasn't been taken away, has it? <laughs> Your dream is still there. And those children that are winning medals are winning medals for you. Yes. Because you're a mother, a, a matriarch. Yes, so they, what you're teaching them, the discipline, the resilience, yeah. the mindset, the right mindset, is the fruit when you see those children holding the medals. Yeah. I, I salute you, Angela. It's, 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 it's a very hard story, but it's a very good story at the same time. You know. Thank you. Uh, Keisha, where are you? You're hiding somewhere, sis. You have to help I'm me here, here because I'm here. I'm here. You, just, you, just, you, just, you, just, you left me with you left me with some tears in my eyes, Angela, because it was a reminder. Our stories are not for us. Mm -hmm. We go through yeah. them to share them with the world and to inspire others. And you have definitely inspired us today. And, and when I put everything together from everyone, I, I, you, you all had something different to say, but you all said the same thing. The same thing, yeah. And at the end of the day, we have a choice. Sherry started by looking at Noah. And he didn't... <laughs> 
he looked crazy to everybody mm -hmm. until it started to rain. Mm -hmm. She went to the well at 12 o'clock. Oh, I see you, Keisha. She didn't, she didn't <laughs> want anybody to see her, but then she saw who she needed to see at 12 o'clock. Come on. Come on. And Angela, you had a dream, but God's plan for you was so much bigger than what you could see. Hallelujah. So ladies, this has been phenomenal, encouraging, empowering, inspiring. I didn't know exactly what to expect this evening, but I knew that Holy Spirit was going to turn up. And as young people were saying, Barbados and turn up. And he literally turned up the place for us this evening because we have so many nuggets to take away. And what a blessing. What a blessing, Chippo. What a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad, Keisha, we decided. And thank you for pushing me because, you know, I've been dreaming this for a long time, wanting to do this. And yeah, Keisha, Keisha has pushed me. So I'm glad you've done it. And I really hope that all of you really enjoyed just this, this hour or so together. And not only just that, I hope that you've learned and you've gleaned something. I, I want to say to you, I want to submit to you that what we've said today is that, you know, don't, don't expect that because we're saying get rid of your limiting beliefs. It's all like tomorrow, woo, you wake up and, you know, the, the, the magician has, has, has waved the wand. It's a process. It's a process. And we go through that process. You're not alone in that process is what I want to say. With Christ, you can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to say thank you. Thank you, everybody, for just attending. And before we, we sort of say goodbye, I just wanted to showcase, you know, our guests and myself and Keisha, what we do. So this is Angela. So she's, what you know, received, she's a finalist for an emerging franchiser of the year. This was in 2019, wasn't it, Angela, I think? Yeah, definitely. No, 2018. I apologize, apologize, yeah. And this is who Angela is. So wow. this is basically the history that she gave you <laughs> in a while. She's, yeah, she's something else. She's something else. That's my sister, y'all. That's my sister. From another mother, but yeah. and another father from the same daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and this is basically her core values with her swim school. That's the franchises, 18 franchises that this young lady has, and she's still growing. She's still expanding. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to bring into, into Africa, Angela, the weather there is much better for swimming. And yeah. Barbados. I would <laughs> like that very yeah. much, Chippo. I would yeah. like that very much. Definitely, definitely. So if you guys want to get in touch with Angela, I just leave your name um, in the comment box. And definitely, if you've got a question for her, put down the question and she will respond after this. And Roseanne, 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 mm -hmm. Pastor Roseanne. Amen. Here you go. You know, she does, she, Roseanne is a member of the John Maxwell team. She's a set, certified mm -hmm. um, leadership coach. And with her, she does individual coaching. She does on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, she does group coaching. She's, she's fantastic with premarital counseling for wow. females. She does disc assessments. So looking at behavioral assessments, which is good. She does masterminds and workshops. If you want to get in touch with Roseanne, you can see the slide later, all the details as well, a bit later, which is over here. And I'm just going to talk about my sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Keisha, 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 Keisha. Keisha does online coaching. She's also a certified John Maxwell team coach. Um, she does training, empowerment speaking. And if you want to contact Keisha, you can get her at Kairos Professional Services. Her details are on screen. We'll also put them up uh, as a post later on. Ambassador. <laughs> this is my sister, y'all, from the state side. So yes. Sherry's an author, she's a speaker, she's a television host. And you know, like I said to you, Miss Dynamite, she's got words, she's got words. She's an earthless <laughs> pusher <laughs> and a vision strategist. So the details as well, we'll post them up just after. And finally, this is myself. I'm the full mm. circle coach. So 
I'm an independent executive director with the John Maxwell team. Um, I'm a business consultant and strategist. I also do ministerial governance. I'm a certified leadership and transformational coach, as well as a speaker and a trainer. If you want to get in touch with me, my details will be there as well. So thank you so much, everybody. I don't know if anybody would like to say something before we go. Um, it's just a Bishop. Boy Bishop had up. his hands up. Bishop Larby had his hand oh, up. I'm not sure if he Bishop. wanted to share a comment. So I wasn't sure if he was raising his hand in agreement or if he wanted to make a comment. You need to unmute yourself, Bishop. I was going to invite him to close us out in prayer. But he seems to be shy, I think, as well. Anybody else on the platform mm -hmm. that would like just to say something? Yeah, I had something. Yeah, I had one thing that Keisha provoked and pulled out of me when she was describing that I spoke about, Nora, that Pastor Roseanne talked about the woman at the well. And then we have a metal swimmer <laughs> and the common denomination all of it was water so i quickly like okay what is this god and so uh thank you for this keisha it says that water represent life water represent refreshment water represent um uh, and birth of fertility and birth so i just believe that after today just like chippo just said that you know what we're going to begin is a refreshment for us that we're, we would dismantle these uh limited beliefs and we're going to begin to birth out some things that god has already started in us so thank you ladies so definitely, much definitely definitely yeah Amen. So we also do workshops here. It's specific to do with limiting beliefs. So what we've done today was almost like just a sum up of it. But, you know, we've got a tailored program, which is a five week program that actually takes you through the processes of actually dismantling limited beliefs. So you'll see a few details coming on on uh, social media in a couple of days as we go through the week. And if any of you would like to join in, um, participate, please you know, by all means register. So I just want to give a big shout out to everybody here. Shanita, hi, how are you? Shanita, you leave me hanging, sis. Oh, hi. <laughs> how are you doing? Very well. This was wonderful. Yeah. So I, 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 I've worked with Shanita. She, she's another lady. So when I do my next slide, Shanita, you're on. You need to talk about what happened to you. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Glendine, hello. <laughs> hi, hi. How are, are you? <laughs> How are you? I am great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you and welcome very much. Hope you enjoyed today. I did. It was excellent. It, is, you, it was very yeah. thought provoking and caused me to think a lot about where I am and where I want to go along with God's purpose. So I thought that yeah. even as ambassador said, the, the, the know, and then when Pastor Rose spoke about, about the lady at the well, and then when Angela spoke about swimming, it was like, wow, no birth, no disposition, and excellent, excellent. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, Sinead, oh, Sinead is from church. Got one of my church sisters. Hi, Sinead. Hmm? How are you? How are you doing, sis? You okay? Yeah. Oh, you're on mute. Hmm. Hello, excuse the mess. Sinead. I'm just taking my hair out. It was a wonderful session. That's all right, sis. I missed the beginning, Thank so you. I'd love to see the beginning, but it was absolutely powerful. The timing is just so essential. Um, and yeah, thank you to each speaker just for a wonderful, edifying, um, truthful, deep, endearing um, sharing, really. It's really encouraging, really encouraging uh, for us that want to step out into God's purposes. Definitely brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sinead. Thank you so much. Yeah. And should I pick up on some? Oh, I'm going to pick up on mom. Jane. <laughs> Hello. I'm trying to go across the globe here as we go along. My sister-in-law has disappeared. She's run away. She knew I was going to just catch her. There you go. Gone. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, so, Mr. Douglas, would you like to just close us out in prayer? 
if that's okay. Hi, good evening to everybody. Sorry, my camera isn't working on this particular system I'm on. Mighty God, we are so grateful. God, we are so honored by who you are. We are so blessed, God, for women, God, that see it fit to come together to share with us. And Father God, because we are a reflection of who you are, we lift our voices in praise to you this evening. We lift our hearts in true adoration of who you are. Father God, we have heard so much nuggets this evening that we but are able to take away mighty God. I'm asking you even now, God, that this words will not be snatched away from us, but we will be able, God, to meditate on them and be able to apply them to our very lives. You brought them from different angles, God, so each of us would be able to take away just enough for us, God, what is needed for us in this season. For some, it was confirmation. For some, it was a challenge. For others, a wake-up call. But God, we are so grateful that you see us where we are at and you're able to lift us to where you want us to go to. So mighty God, even now for each presenter, God, and for those that would have organized this, Father God, I am praying that you will pour back into them, press down, shaken together, and running over mighty God as they continue to empower others. Father God, as we go our separate ways, continue to guard over us. May your guardian angels encamp round about us. These things I ask through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you very amen. much. So thank you to everyone. Um, I'm still blown away by all that has taken place. You know, we can choose to look at the last year in so many ways, but we have been brought together from all across the world because of that unfortunate circumstance. And Anjali reminded us this evening, this afternoon, that unfortunate circumstances can birth beautiful results. So this evening, it was definitely a blessing to be here. Chippo, I honor you, my sister. I honor you and I thank you. We both push each other out of our comfort zones. And not only do we dismantle limiting beliefs, but we prove the, the importance of our tribe because who we surround yes. ourselves with yes. definitely makes the difference. So it has been an honor. We look yes. forward to seeing you another time in another session and God's blessings on you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.